Good morning, friends. How are you all doing? My name is August. This is Cozy Rosie Reads, and this is the start of another weekly reading vlog. It is actually the day after Christmas. You might be able to tell I'm a little disheveled. I am wearing my Christmas Story t-shirt, and I am drinking coffee out of my newly gifted mug that my parents got me. Self-care with a cat licking itself in unmentionable areas. I love it. It has been a very, very hectic past few days, uh, bouncing between my family and then my partner's family. It's been so long since I've spent this much time with family, um, and it's just made me realize like how much I have missed hanging out with family. So it was just really, really lovely. Um, I feel like I was spoiled rotten with so many wonderful gifts, and I loved giving gifts so much this year, and being able to spend time with each other. I am going to be reading. I started this really late last night when we got home from my parents' house, but Lacrimore by S.J. Costello. This is a book that I had started as an audiobook earlier this year, and I just knew that the writing was just so, so stunning that I was like, I need a physical version so I can annotate it and read it with my eyes and really soak it up. I only got, let's see, seven pages in last night, but holy shit, it's so good. It's so much better reading it with my eyes than listening to it. It's so much better. Like if you like really descriptive gothic atmospheres and kind of a fantasy world, it, it really is like a fantasy world, but it's not really set in magic. It's just a kind of different world and societal standards and stuff. It has a really big potential to be one of my favorites of this year because I just, I'm loving, I'm cherishing this writing style so much. Like this first few sentences are absolutely gorgeous, of which I might share later on in the vlog, like reading a little bit of it out loud and annotating it and stuff. So basically my goal for today is just to edit a vlog really reset and relax and just kind of like oh, we did it the holiday season was just so busy with family and it was great but it's exhausting um so i'm excited to just kind of relax and unwind um unpack all of my christmas goodies so i hope you're all doing really really well thank you so much for being here i hope you enjoy this vlog i have no idea where it's gonna go from here but going into january things are slowing down quite exponentially for me and I'm just really excited. So um, I'm really looking forward to that and I'm just really happy. So I hope you all had a good holiday if you celebrate and I will check in with you all a little bit later. Thank you so much for being here. friends <laughs> Omi got a new sweater today do you want to show it off honey let's show them your sweater yeah <laughs> it has little pine trees on it it looks so good on him I've never gotten him a lighter colored sweater but you pull it off 
he's trying desperately to make biscuits and he's purring like crazy so he's gonna be in the background for a little bit um it's been a little bit since i've updated you all it is now the 27th it's the it's a monday did get my first pedicure in over like three or four months which was so lovely that was really nice i brought lacrimore with me and i am now on page 43 and i'm using this cute little cat bookmark that my partner got me it's magnetic they got it for me for christmas as like a stocking stuffer which i think it just went so well with the cover of this book I am loving this book. It's so beautifully written that sometimes I have to like reread sentences over and over to actually understand and visualize what's happening because it is very like purple prose and very gothic and very beautiful writing. I thought I'd read like the first little paragraph out loud to you all so you know what I mean with the writing style it has, but it opens up with this. A pinprick of light reflected against the windows from across the lake like a foreign speck caught in the eye of Lacrimore. The lighthouse that crowned the building was dark by comparison, cold and blackened for years. Something in the house shuddered. Perhaps it was the sagging rot within its carcass as plaster crumbled from its walls and birds nested in its bones. Perhaps it was a gasp of life within its sleeping system, rattling through the halls with a renewed breath. As the feeble sphere of a stranger's light bobbed through the waters, the house crouched down and watched its progress. It is so beautiful and gothic. So we're following this character named Sevre Sen, um, who is in this world. It's like a very, it's, it's fantasy, but it's not like magical fantasy, but she's a medium. You kind of are alluding to a lot of things. You're not really given a whole lot of information, but basically her kind of cast of people as mediums, they experience dreams of people who are dead, like die, and then they go travel to them to go perform their funeral rites. And so she arrives to this, like, island, Lacrimore, um, where this beautiful, huge, gothic mansion is. And the guy that she saw, you know, supposedly dead, his name is Lalakai. And apparently he's still alive. So she's like, why was I brought to this island then? My dreams only show me dead people. Um, but he's still alive. He's very sick and very old, but he's still alive. And then there's also this doctor there named Dr. Val Vanderus. Dr. Vanderus. And he is this, like, very snotty, grumpy guy. Um, and then you find out that he was actually exiled from the mainland and went to Lacrimore on Lalakai's request. So instead of serving time, he was traveled out to Lacrimore. So you're trying to figure things out, like, what's happening. And it sounds like Vanderus and Lalakai are performing these, like, experiments to extend life. And that's what got Vanderus exiled in the first place and Sevre, who is the medium, is very anti like trying to extend people's life. Like death is permanent and infinite and inescapable basically. So she's in this giant house with these two guys. One is very ill and one is a doctor who's performing these like very radical experiments. And then there's also like a few other side characters in here who work on the grounds. Like there's a cook and a gardener and a like kind of housemaid. So it's this huge house. There's just so many descriptions of like these old rooms. Um, Sevre and Vanderus like do not get along and they butt heads a lot. There's some like mythical kind of creatures in here like giant whales um, and fish and stuff that they that are like beached on the shore and then they're used for food because they're just so isolated out here in this island. And I honestly have no idea where it's going, but I just, I love it. I love it so much. Um, so I'm really loving this. Say bye. Say bye to everyone, Omi. We're checking later. Omi says bye. Omi says bye in this cute little sweater.
up friends? It is Wednesday. I am wrapping up my work day from home. I work remotely, part-time, my part-time job. This is what I look like when I'm actually a human. Yesterday was so much fun and I'm realizing that this vlog is super disjointed, but I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's a mood. I hope it's a vibe of just like everyday life. Typically I end my vlogs on Tuesdays before I hop into my part-time job, but I just thought why not like vlog my entire time that I'm reading just this one book. I am now like more than halfway through. Still got a ways to go, but I'm hoping I can enjoy it. Yeah, just a very hodgepodge of a vlog, but I'm excited to edit it. I will say that. Uh, yesterday was so much fun though. I met up with a friend who was visiting from LA and it was so much fun. We ended up hanging out for four hours and we did a photo swap. So I took some photos of him. He took some photos of me. We got really weird and experimental with some shots and I'm just like so excited to see his content. He's wildly talented, like such a cool artist. Um, so I'm really excited to see what he did with me because I'm not a model. <laughs> tell. So that was a lot of fun and then later that night my partner and I hung out with some friends that were in town from Arizona. So just a lot of seeing people that I haven't been able to see in a very very long time. So that was really nice. We ended up going to this new-ish kind of like music bar. Uh, that was a lot of fun. There was live music and I uh, had a delicious cucumber mocktail. Like life is good. I feel like in the winter I just start to thrive. I actually start to have a social life. I start to hang out with people. My workload is definitely starting to lessen. I have a lot of deadlines coming up next week that I'm just not quite ready for, but that's life. So um, kind of giving myself some grace right now and just trying to enjoy the holiday season while friends are in town. And yeah, it was just really nice giving myself grace. I am loving this look so much. In my end of the year wrap up, I kind of alluded to like, this might become my new favorite book of all time. It is so well written friends, gothic atmosphere. I want to talk a little bit more about the plot, but I don't want to spoil anything. So I will just say that I have been annotating the actual crap out of this book, like actually writing in it, highlighting it. It's so good. Basically this house that is on Lacrimore is its own entity. It is anthropomorphic and it has its own feelings and it keeps doing weird things. And it's like a character in this book, which I absolutely love. And it's just, this whole book is about like legacy, what it means to make an impact on the world and how people who are so power hungry for that will do anything to just have a legacy and to like not leave this earth behind forgotten. A lot of these characters in here are just so afraid of being forgotten when they're dead. They're historians, they're scholars. It's like very, very dark academia. Our main character doesn't even really feel like a main character, Sivre. She is the medium and she's kind of going through a time of it. But what's amazing is that the side characters in this book feel more prominent and you get so much of their backstories and who they are and they're all just like very genuine characters. Like it just feels so real to me. Um, this is just really, really working for me. And I really want more people to read it because I think it deserves so much more hype and much more attention. And I'm just very sad that not a lot of people have read this or even heard of it. So my mission in life is to, that's why I started this booktube channel, is to make lesser known books more known, like matching them with the right people and the right readers. And I just really hope that this finds its way to someone who will love it as much as I do right now. I don't really see a way that this ending could disappoint me. Like it's just so beautifully written. I just don't see it going downhill. Like I'm really, really loving this book. So yeah, I'm gonna keep you all updated probably take you into um, the rest of this week. I do have Friday off, which is fantastic because it's New Year's Eve and it's also my sister's birthday. So I might start a new vlog for that weekend, but I'm hoping to have Lacrimore done by then. <laughs> um, I'll just be working the next few days and I can finish Lacrimore. Hopefully I can finish it tomorrow. I'm just enjoying it so much. I like kind of don't want it to end, but I'm going to give myself until you know, the end of this year. If I can just finish this by the end of December, I'm gonna be happy. But like, I just, I just don't want it to end yet. It's been a long time since I've like not wanted a book to end. So it's a great feeling. I'm really happy. I'm loving this so much. This cover is just delectable to me too, this color and the feeling of it. So anyway, just wanted to do a little check-in because this vlog is super weird. <laughs> but I hope you like it. Cut to some more montages, I guess, of my random life that I randomly remember to film. Okay.
Okay friends, just a quick update because I'm on my lunch break from my part-time job. I'm at my parents' house and they've made this beautiful library. This book is like breaking my heart. Like I feel like I'm on the verge of crying. It is so good. It's so creepy and eerie and unsettling and really sad. I don't know if other people will find it as sad as I do, but like it just, it really hits a weird heart string in me. I'm currently on page 146 chapter called The Historian. It's just getting really eerie. I only have, there's only 180 pages. But I'm really sad about it. Like I really, I really don't want this to end. Guys, it's just, it's so, I can't express how much um, I love this book. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, it's so dark. It's so dark and like eerie and so beautifully written. This writing style is so my jam. So poetic and dark. I, I need to read more by this author. I need to know more. So I'll uh, be looking up more about them and hopefully share a little bit more with you about if they, they have any other books, a little bit more about this author, where they're from. I Yo, <laughs> this book is really messing me up. It's so beautiful, but it's so sad. Like, I definitely would love to reread this book. Oh, it's like, whoa, okay. I obviously can't actually say words right now. I actually have no idea how to how to formulate thoughts or opinions on this other than like, I'm just, oh my God, that last chapter was wild. The characters are so well developed. I will say that too. Like everything that they say feels believable and real. You can feel like the emotion, at least I can. I can really feel the emotion and the intensity at which they're talking and the passion behind it. And like the fear, like it's like this author doesn't even have to tell you that someone's fearful. It's just the way that their dialogue subtly changes. Powerful, that's all I'll say right now. It's just like powerful. I just don't understand how, some, how a book can be this good. Like this feels like to me reading it is like when I watch Interstellar. Like Interstellar is one of my favorite movies. I, as soon as I finish watching it, I immediately want to rewatch it because it is just this roller coaster of emotions, the aesthetics, the soundtrack, the emotions, the acting, the worlds, the atmosphere, like it's just so well-rounded and that's how I feel about this. It's like so bittersweet. It's like I want to read it to make myself like sad or emotional or, you know, feel atmospheric. It's the same feeling I get when I watch Interstellar. So I don't know, hopefully my descriptions aren't too vague, but I just really don't know how to describe this. Oh, it's so good. Okay, I'll check in with you all a little bit later. Okay friends, I am back home. It is Thursday night, but technically it's a Friday for me because I am done with my part-time job. I have clean laundry, which is the best feeling in the world. I have not read any more of Lacrimore, but when I got home though, I don't know if anyone else, I'm sure everyone can relate to this feeling, like the sense of claustrophobia in your own apartment or house when it's like just really cluttered and messy. Um, so for the first time, probably, I hate to admit this, like since September, I'm going to be organizing my life. Just organizing my shelves, my drawers, my closet. I need to admit something to you all. I was so busy during my busy season that I have neglected so many aspects of myself. Um, I'm not necessarily like a neat freak, but I really like to have things nice. I'll give you a quick overview of what my life has turned into when I'm so busy. You know, it's almost kind of turns into like a depression room. So yeah. Let me uh, show you the evidence and we're going to clean it up tonight. I'm going to stay up late tonight just doing it so I can wake up tomorrow feeling so much better in my own space. So let me show you the damage right now. So you might have seen in my year in review video, which I'll link down below, um, my shelves are overflowing right now, but there are a lot of things on here that just are not in the right place. This space is usually just like, there are always a lot of books here, but it doesn't look this cluttered. And then I have random stuff down here that is I just threw to the side. Vanity over here, it's not too bad, but like these things just don't belong on there. 
Now for the creme de la creme that I'm so embarrassed to share, but this is real life, okay? Okay, not proud of this, but again, remember, I was in my busy season, Ugh, and my life has felt like chaos ever since September. This is my closet right now, okay? These are all closed. Let me see if I can zoom out. Yeah, piles of, these are clean clothes. Um, my shelves are, it, it's just a nightmare. I have, <sighs> yeah, just sharing real life things in life get hectic and chaotic. I know I'm not alone in that, and it feels like when, for me at least, when my physical space starts to get disorganized, it's just a really, it stresses me out even more because I can't find anything, and the clothes just pile up and up and up and up, and I really don't like it, but I'm going to tackle that today. That is what I'm tackling tonight. I clean out this closet, which means montage time, which means um, just donate a bunch of clothes that I haven't touched or I've forgotten I've had. Swapping out my summer clothes for my winter clothes, which I haven't even done yet because that's just how fast things got chaotic and I wasn't prioritizing my apartment or my life. I'm going to feel so much better when this is done, but it's going to take me a while. So buckle up, friends. We're going to do it. <laughs> Wish me luck! <laughs> finished it friends 
I just finished Lacrimoire. The ending did not disappoint me. This is such an easy five star and it is actually December 31st today. So I read a five star before the end of the year and I'm so happy. I'm so happy. New favorite book. I did find out some more information about S.J. Costello. On the back here about the author it reads, S.J. Costello is a foolish gothic protagonist moonlighting as a New York City based storyteller. So this is their first novel and it is heavily influenced by 19th century history, ghost stories, and the memories that settle in forgotten places. So I want to read so much more by S.J. Costello. If they are watching, please write another book. Please, 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 please. I love this with every fiber of my being. Loved it so incredibly much. I want to reread it. Like, amazing. Amazing. Five stars. The language, the word choices, the atmosphere, the characters. Like, I loved all of them so much. It was literally a perfect book. I would have changed nothing about this. Loved the amount of dialogue and description. I thought it was a perfect balance of adventure, but also reminiscing on very important morals. And it brings up so much to think about, about history, legacy, forgotten things, forgotten history, um, how we tend to turn a blind eye to things that make us uncomfortable. So, so freaking good. So freaking good. So I, I hope you really enjoyed this vlog of me discovering a new favorite read of all time because not only is this five stars and maybe one of my favorite books of 2021 since it is the last day of 2021, but also a new favorite of all time, hands down. Um, I think in 2022, I should definitely do an updated like my favorite books of all time kind of video so I can gush even more. Um, and then if you do end up reading this, I would love to recommend some other books that I think you might like based on the vibe and atmosphere and writing style. Either way, I really, really hope you enjoyed this vlog, this very random vlog of just discovering a new favorite book of all time. What a, what a pleasurable feeling, honestly, like reading a book and realizing like, oh my gosh, this is like my new favorite thing of all time. Like I'm just so happy. So I'm going to conclude it there. Five stars for Lacrimoire love please let me know if you plan on getting a copy of this if you've read it if you plan on reading it in 2022 i would really love to hear your thoughts like please feel free to comment below or dm me on my bookstagram which is also linked down below um if you read it and we can chat more about it because so many more people need to read this and i hope that this platform can help celebrate and spark a conversation about it as well so also i just have to say i just marked this book as read on goodreads and there are only 93 ratings so only 93 people have said that they've read this book on goodreads so read it give it attention give it love this is a 2020 release deserves so many more readers thank you all so much for being here i hope you enjoyed the vlog i will see you all again very soon for my next video stay cozy my friends bye